Yeah. 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 Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Family Area 2023 meeting of Buckingham Town Council Planning Committee. Um, we have no members of the public panel. No. no. In that case, could we move to apologies for absence, please? Thank Councillor Davis. Thank you very much. Declarations of interest. That's a part of it. Yeah, I'm um, just normal um, in terms of the onset on um, the forever being cancelled planning committee of North Bucks. Um, <laughs> I, I think we've, um, I think back in last year, we managed to do 45% of the scheduled meetings. And I think it was before the occasional planning committee of North Bucks um, and villages. Um, but nevertheless, it just apparently be a credit list, isn't it? Um, so I can't point on the other thing. Thank you. Anybody else? No, thank you. Um, item three then minutes. These are the minutes of the November 7th planning committee. Maybe take those as the correct record. Yep. Great. Great. Thank you very much. You will get the December <laughs> minutes at the next meeting. So. Um, right, we move on to item four Buckingham neighborhood plan, availability plan, and Buckingham the local plan to receive a verbal report from the clerk on a local plan survey, which will be on the February agenda. Yes, um, this is a, a survey of what infrastructure Buckingham has got. It's been sent out in the form of a table with categories and a number, and we are asked to check the accuracy of the number. I've written to them and said, this is quite a pointless exercise because I don't know if you put dentists nine, whether you're even counting the same five per time. Mm. Um, I haven't had an answer yet. <laughs> <laughs> However, what I'm proposing to do, and I've started already, is just make a list. They can get seven or eight pages of list and they can check it themselves. <laughs> However, I would like some help. I can't do all of everything. There are some things that I want to check, like, for example, which of the petrol stations have got EV charging points and how many, and that sort of thing. <laughs> so if you would like to email me with any particular fields that you'd be interested in, mm, okay. in the morning I will email out their survey so that you can see. I have added a few things in because I have the street market in and that sort of yeah. thing. So we'll I'm happy to do the petrol stations. Volunteer, <laughs> volunteer for various yeah. bits. I mean, to get out the car, it's so. not going to be that arduous mm. because some of it's obvious. Some of it is simply because I don't think that a lot as yeah. much as you do. And I might have missed a food shop so yeah. on the industrial estate. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. So if you would email me in the morning, I'll do it. I'll allocate you the bits and pieces that you <laughs> I, mean, I, I just could not believe that they just put numbers in boxes. Also, they included a bus service, which is a school bus service, which is internal to Aylesbury, um, and forgot completely about the X5 and the X60. Oh, um, God. And I'm thinking, you know, if, if, if they can't be that reliable on just, you know, that, then how can I guarantee that any of their numbers are right? And yeah. They haven't included three dentists and Yeah. 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 And that'll be on the February. That'll be on the February. Yeah. Uh, that's what happened. Yeah, so it's well on the way to Wednesday, really. Yeah. Anyway, I'm happy to help. I'm always going to propose for things to do to get my steps up. That's going to suggest say what you need to do. But just to tell me how I'm going to get it done. Um, that's one thing. I've got something else to say about the workshops next week, or beginning this week, probably. Um, when we've got a moment, I'll ask that question. But I'll ask you now if you want. Well, it's good to find out. That's where we're on that in neighborhood plan. So, oh, okay. Terry indicated that he was coming along to the workshop. Yeah. Um, and I was surprised with that because I thought the workshops were just the Buckingham Town Councils. And I misunderstood that. Yeah. There's a working group. Yeah. Uh, last the clerk. No, no, they are. These are the people spoken to throughout the years, and we are supposed to invite interested people from outside. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. 
Um, so no, it's quite it's very informal. It's not like a council meeting at all. It's yeah. very much just a focus group to get some ideas together, Sheila. Um, okay. Okay. Um, that's a yeah, I think it's um I'm mean, interested in that they want to do a consultation on Buckingham to find out that we're here. Um, I, I also think it's probably worth noting that a lot of announcing the box box. And um, um, so the, um, the, the um, hitter with the cat and, and um, Rex the dog are probably more capable than we are with medical cat. I think there's lots of things like that we do need to put in it because. Um, if they are going to use this information to draw together information for any future Buckinghamshire plan, which, by the way, um, there's a subgroup for the Buckinghamshire plan. It consists of um, chairmen of planning committees, cabinet members, senior planning officers, but as far as I can recollect, nobody from the opposition or no other councillors. So, I mean, they must be quite busy trying to play all this stuff. Um, so I think we should have them. Um, I'd be happy to... Um, be of, be of assistance if I can. Um, but we think, and can we, through the um, um, chair, just send a reminder out of when these planning um, schedule of meetings for the town plan, just so that, um, um, what, what the intention of it is. Because I was always under the impression until we start actually drawing together the plan, it's, it's, a, it's an informal gathering. If you want to get the information off, because then when we actually draw the plan and start putting it together, it becomes a council exercise at that point. And to that point, it's just information gathering. And considering they haven't really done any consultation on the Buckinghamshire plan, we probably want to hear. Um, so I'm so, um, happy to do that. If we could just that through you, Jen, and then out again so that we would have missed it, because many people on the council have got jobs that they won't be able to be available in the day. We must at some point make sure we do a meeting so that they can actually be involved um, um, a day that there isn't something else. Otherwise, they we miss the council who are working, not able to take part in it. It's very important for the year because they might have something we don't. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, it's just worth underlining that um, Wheeze, our deputy town clerk, Wheeze, has gone up the schedule for uh, these informal meetings, the yeah. first two of this week, um, Wednesday. One o'clock and Thursday at one o'clock, and then there's more afterwards. But as some players said, they, they are informal meetings, so it's really getting together to discuss how we proceed. And eventually, when we've got all the information together, we'll come back more formally to um, the relevant committees and to the council. Thank you. Um, can we move on to item five? Yes. Fox Parishes Planning Consortium. Councillor Anthony Ralph is our representative. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have not got a, a standard um, uh, report this time because uh, there hasn't been a meeting, but I regret to inform you that uh, Jeff Culverhouse, who is, was the uh, secretary of the MVPPC, died on the 19th of December, oh. which is a great shock to everybody. Um, and his funeral will be at Stoke Hammond on the 24th of January. And um, I'm certainly going to attend as a representative. And if I can pass this now back to the chair, and I know he'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, and of course, what Anthony said, it's a great shock to everybody. Yeah. I've known Jeff probably for 15 or more years when I was chairman of former parish council. We used to work closely with him, Roy van der Poel, and mm. Lou Munger, all the people from Winslow. And Jeff has always been an absolute model. Of a, of a secretary of a consortium in everything he did and um, he will be greatly missed and yeah. I too will be attending the funeral. I have checked with the mayor and she's agreed I, I could re represent Buckingham Town Council at the funeral and she will represent yeah. um, our this the, the consortium. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. No, I'm very sad to hear that Gosh. and thank you Anthony for giving well, thanks for letting us know the sad news. I think the fact that we He's one of these people through the chair and Anthony, who has been around for a very, very long time, has put a hell of a lot of work into trying to do the right thing in life and um, trying to ensure that people are informed, consulted, and actually get to speak. Whether for you, chair, it's something that the mayor would consider um, to write a short thank you note, which could be assisted with. Because I think sometimes, latterly, now that somebody was appreciated, is a very important thing, not today, not immediately, but a later stage. None of your 
my loved one would appreciate what they did counted, I think is an important thing to do. So it's for mm -hmm. you and Maggie Mayor would be happy to do that. And I think it would just show that we from Buckingham who may actually appreciate yeah. this type of thing because he did contribute a lot to society. Mm -hmm. Thank you, <laughs> Um, if we can move on then to item number six, action reports. Catherine has put those in front of us. Um, cycle away on the road, walk appropriate officer not yet identified. Um, let's find out, on page two, find out if you need planning permission form request has been acknowledged. There's no result yet. Um, the new green sign on Tindrick Road roundabout and the 40 mile an hour limit signs and repeaters. Um, Mr. Essam. Highways is meeting developers on site to point out errors in the installations, including siting, which is not further drawings. He will report back to us and he is covering over the cemetery wording because it's probably two years in advance of it actually opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think it's take it outside the meeting, but I think this not responding to the town clock in the site away is gone on long enough. You will know that I've been. Um, involved in it since 2013 14. And I think at this late stage, not consulting with an officer that's captured, and I'm happy to work with the town clerk to make sure that we get a response um, because this isn't good enough. We, they are well aware that we are a, um, not only a landowner and a beneficiary because they've been told on numerous occasions. And they've been questioned on numerous occasions about this. So it shouldn't be any surprise to the officers. Uh, they've had to draft numerous written responses to written questions. And, and they were going to have to the council about this. I'll be very happy to work with the town clerk, but not undermine the town clerk, and to work with Steve, our new officer, I should imagine he probably did through yourself. I should imagine he's probably um, taken on some of these types of things. And um, but I do need to get the eyes. And it's in my other position. I'm not satisfied with you not getting a response, and um, and um, and they, they can't really get. Um, I can annoy them greatly. Get a response, and then um, we'll enjoy doing so. If that's okay for you, and I work yeah. make sure that um, I represent the council, you not my own prejudices, which are many. <laughs> 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 Um, other items on the action list, waste ground next to Fold Bridge Street, the Council of Harvey County brought to our attention. Um, there has been a, a general tidying up of the area, removal of rubbish and waste. We've had obviously concerns that there might be something happening down there, but uh, BC planning reports no pre application discussions or applications yet. But the site is being checked weekly for any developments. So, Anthony? Sorry, Chair, I just wanted to hop back to the A422 bypass and the, uh, the proposal uh, for a left hand turn at the roundabout. Yeah. And I was just going to tie it in with the presentation we've had this evening. <laughs> and on the assumption that um, what we have been told, I believe, by Mr. Marsh, he doesn't need any extra. Land, it seems to me even more important now that um, this is carefully looked at at an early stage so that uh, people don't trip over each other with big diggers. Absolutely. Karen, sorry. I, I was about to bring out the same point as Councillor oh, yeah. because I could see that um, we were supposed to be having some sort of meeting. Yeah. And uh, I would much appreciate it. There are a lot of things going on at that roundabout. Including traffic lights at the moment, which of course brings the traffic right way back to uh, the main turn. Yeah, thank you. Um, John, just thinking about this for the first time, really. Um, the presentation this evening obviously addressed the issue of the Buckingham and Walcott Chatham Foundation and the Ransom Strip that Councillor Edwards mentioned. Does the Ransom Strip interact with this extra leg on the roundabout? <laughs> <land? laughs> Well, we have yet to find out. That's why Mr. Mark has been invited to a meeting to yeah. hopefully show him, perhaps Powell and company to bring our horse along and show the bridle way and the, and the I crash back. Right. Uh, I'm just wondering if we've got an accurate plan of that Ransom Street. We have, we have, but it's that accurate to the point that it doesn't show anything. Oh, okay. we, have just, we have the land registered document. Okay, and 
I just wonder if it's good. how much did we actually stick the uh, Shire Council for? I think the point in thing with the roundabout is that it probably an unnecessary expense for any relevant solution. Well, it's not going to actually solve anything. Um, it is part of the fucking sheer transport, the fucking sheer fucking county council transport mm-hmm. plan, which I sent to the chairman the other day, which he said that's out of date. And I know it's out of date, but that's what they're using to verify. But if they are going to use that transport um, scheme to Buckingham, which was agreed, came through here, and we all noted how wonderful it was on the district council, but they weren't going to use it in the Val plan. But now it's come back as it was an accepted Buckinghamshire Council document, as an accepted document it appears. What they're not using in it is the, the nice phrases in there about contributions within the set, within the plan was to take contributions out of it to pay for the Western Bypass. And they're not doing that. And I can't see how this went about. But to be brief, there are a more important thing on that roundabout would be to solve the integral problem, the fact that there's a possibility to do a diversion of the page hill water system, mm-hmm. which way that water would go down the bypass and drop in the river past Buckingham rather than Burley Peace. Any money spent on that shouldn't be addressed until they resolve that at the same time. And I think we should be writing to them, I propose that we write to them, making them aware of this proclamation. Do you those who were involved when we had the Tesco roundabout works, um, remember it always flooded. Yeah. And then we, and then we managed to get between us all um trains put under the roundabout, it didn't flood anymore. Um amazing that, isn't it? Um and um the trains don't stop flooding. Um and and but I think we need to make sure if they're gonna have to do some restructure of that roundabout and while they're doing it, if we don't want that at least they put something right. There's that burly piece, it would take the water away from there and would stop dumping it down by the children's play areas. I think, from you, Chairman, I think we, we must put that in a discussion after a, a meeting of the town council, but not back into the council, to discuss the, the problems of that roundabout and, and ask them to come and, and meet um, yourself and whoever um, to discuss it because. Um, Rather than drift away, because um, Buckingham is a very large place and, uh, and it might get to go. But the priority at the moment is to meet Mr. March to discuss what's happening and then, then we can follow up from there. That's so absolutely right. That's for a future meeting. Thank you very much. In fact, I've just finished the mentions we're doing. Um, Catherine has done what we call the hand grab reports, which is on the agenda. Yeah, yes. it's um, Year of the three of the matters. Um, we wanted to invite the insurance company representative to a meeting. AXA and NFP have been contacted, no response yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's correct. I think it's almost six months, really. Mm. I think it's dropped off anyway. Yeah. If, if we haven't had it in six months. Mm. Um, of great urgency now, the Section 106, the balance of money for Stratford Fields Car Park. Um, as you know, we've got till February 2023 to try and come up with a way of spending <laughs> this money on parking. At Stratford Hills <coughs> Car Park, Town Clark to seek solution. Have we got anywhere? I had some correspondence with Mr. Rowley. Um, I, I just find out what I think exactly what he said. <coughs> so I said as a direct question why isn't it possible to spend the money on something such as CCTV or improved signage? Um, the response I've had back. Is and I put it is in quotes. It is to be spent the the eighth schedule of the second one six agreement. So what was actually specifically written in was to be spent solely on providing an additional forty car parking spaces at Buckingham Athletic Football Ground. Mm-hmm. Any other use of the money without the express agreement of the party to pay the contribution would render the council render the council liable to return the money as it would not have been spent in accordance with the legal agreements. The project to extend the available car parking was forward funded and delivered by ABDC's parking team in October 2010, ahead of the receipt of the contribution in February 2013. So as I read that, Mr. Rowley is basically saying the agreement that he has ended up with 
is solely to provide additional parking spaces and he doesn't feel that CCTV or anything else would mm -hmm. apply. Um, I'm guessing that there's just not space to put any there isn't any space to put any more in. Catherine's looking at me, you know. Do you want to, did we read that differently from how I did? I mean, they have to install. I'm the rule. But it just reinforces the fact that we need a site of sector 106 at the draft stage. That's far too tight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's not him that would have done no, it. No, it's, it's not that would have done it. But if we don't have sides of it, we yeah. can't say, hang on a minute, what if it doesn't cost that much? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councillor Harvey. Yeah, I mean, it does really important. <laughs> I actually absolutely agree with what you just said, Catherine. I mean, it's just bonkers that this money's going to go back to the developers mm -hmm. because, yeah. because of some person who didn't write a sufficiently wide note in the section 106. This makes me very anxious about the skate park, I have to say, because time was running out there, mm -hmm. and we still haven't got it. Mm -hmm. We still haven't seen anything in writing mm -hmm. to say when the new skate park is going to be built. Yeah. We know it's mm -hmm. notionally somewhere this spring, but I really would like us to chase that up again, specifically in this context, because I worry, because prices are going up, that suddenly it will become not possible within the section 106, which will be a crying shame. Mm -hmm. So could we do that? Could we chase up and say what's happening, when is it happening, what's brand? And let's have some specifics. Well, we have, we have actually had to just do Banbury at the moment, referring to this charter and the lack of consultation over section 106 or those in ways. So we're still waiting mm -hmm. for his reply on that. The latter point, um, you know, Tavi, I did, as you would imagine, question the cabinet member Clive Harris about this. It is in the written um, minute here. <coughs> he says it's going to be completed in March. He also said that they were going to find portions of money from other pots. Mm. So because look, I was concerned the very same point that you raised. This is that when we first visited um, back in the um, dear heavy capitalized when we first visited this, um, um, that um, well, this would be progressed. So he come back, I am not going to leave it. Mm. But the point about being involved in section 106 is an historical problem. Um, and in, if we have to take any joy out of anything that's happened recently, we did, one did push to get us involved in the Maid Morton 3 application. And we are a party to that section 106. So I think that's a step forward. It isn't a, it's not a panacea, but I think what we should be in, in, in involved in is making sure that when we draft our neighbor plan, that our neighbor plan writes into its agreement about our involvement in section 106. Of course, also, only today it was interesting listening to other people discuss still, because if we had the district council had I asked the so, and I asked back in the council the district council had included still into the um district plan as appalling as that was um for us in many ways, um we would have had still it would have meant that the council would have had um an instant interest in section one no six stroke infrastructure level because we had a legal right to be a contribution in the money countries. While we're dealing with this antiquated system, it, it, we have no legal say to it. So I think that maybe we need to um, take it on board what I said. If we need to push the question about how Buckinghamshire Council is going to deal with Section 106, and maybe we need to um, address those questions in a, um, to a broad spectrum of, of, of cabinet members, because they don't just deal, section 106 gets dealt with by um, both planning and, and highways. It also gets dealt with by communities. And it also, because they discuss it in communities, which is the um, 
and committee. So I think we need to look down and find the people and try to get them to meet us to discuss how they wish to go forward. Because we cannot keep repeating this conversation. And they'll say, well, it'll all be all right when we have SIL in the Buckinghamshire plan, which is supposed to happen by 2025. <laughs> um, but I do think that if we're not careful, the new council in 2025 will be exactly the same position we are today. Not a signatory, and it's not about us as council because it gives the clerk the legal opportunity to actually advise us and, and, and take control of that portion of money. And if it had been so, we wouldn't have had the £18,000 go amiss mm. because we would have known what we were driving on such a money that we would have put an indemnity in there to do something else yeah. because we're very locally based. So, and that was different council, of course, who. Um, took five years to draft the um, Section 106 agreement for the for the um, cemetery, which we never asked for. Um, so um, that's history. But I'd like to propose that we do discuss how we're going to go forward and maybe have a separate meeting about Section 106s and how we're going to do the council, um, giving the staff some time to um, prepare that in the future and then go back to what we know is legally good practice rather than just have a meeting with them um, where they've got all the good the knowledge on their side. I didn't think you need to prepare for that meeting um, and, and then hammer it home. Well, as I said, this is that compliance so that we are still awaiting this response from Steve mm -hmm. and Rick, and that's what this is exactly about, yeah. why they're not involving us in discussions right. on Section 106 agreements as per towns and parishes charter. And yeah. That's exactly what that's about. So probably you know, Take me note what you said. If we wait we get the response from Steve Van Brick, and depending on that, we then what does it say? Attack. Obviously, this is also going to be a big subject in the uh, um, new neighborhood plan. Exactly. Yeah. So, you're we're gifted with some people who have got well, skin in the game, as I put really yeah. with this, um, and some good body stars on it over what's gone wrong before. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing what you say, but if we could just wait until we get to the plan, but then after after we, we get that response. That's agreeable. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Can we move on to planning applications, sir? Okay. Um, first one is number one, Campbell for the Court. Um, it's converting the existing retail space to community space park. Now, this is the town end of the block. Mm -hmm. It's where they've boarded up the ground floor and has been since. The building was built, it was designed in the original plan as a retail unit. It's never been used for retail. It was occasionally used as a type office, but the boarded up window has never been removed and the unit made good. Um, the economic development people at Aylesbury are against this. They say there is a requirement for retail premises in Buckingham, and this should be marketed as retail premises. Um, they also question, as I would, what is a community hub? They're showing a couple of different ideas, and that's all they are, but um, layout of tables and chairs, and that's it. Anthony? Um, picking up on the magic word community, are we talking about the Candle Court community? Mm -hmm. Are we talking the Buckingham uh, community as a whole? And so, in other words, uh, we'd like the definition of what community is in this instance. John? Yeah, that was my point too. I was open to who, um, like for users. Well, I did get excited. I seen a bit on the news the other day about space sports in Cornwall and North Carolina. Yeah. I thought maybe this was going to be something good to do with the space race in the UK, but obviously not. But never mind. Um, I think if this was an extra facility in terms for people to meet, um, then I'd be a little bit more inclined towards it. Yeah. Um, because there is. I mean, the other retail spaces in the moment fell, fell away, didn't it? The one that was uh, the yoga club, mm -hmm. which I think has been approved to be turned into residence now. So the economic uh, group down in Ellsbury we weren't so hot on that. So this is an even less desirable space potentially. Um, so I would support it, but on the condition that it is for the community, not just for the residents of Canada Court. Um, and that somebody would need there need to be a caretaker arrangement to actually look it up a bit like mm -hmm. a bit like this room. It could be a nice facility for people 
to use. Um, not just, I mean, the residents of Calico Court certainly, but other people do. Thank you, Bill. But currently, on behalf of the Yes, well, certainly, echo very much uh, John's comments there, because who has bought into this? And if there's nobody going to use it, it's just another white elephant. Mm. Um, but we totally agree that the retail space is a dead duck. It shouldn't be trying to be reenacted. It's not a very attractive space, but it could perhaps offer uh, a, a stopping point for community, particularly residents of Camberford Court, if they have bought into it. Mm. And we wondered if we could question, I think it's the Guinness Housing Trust, isn't it? Yeah. The actors. Can we write to them and say who has actually uh, bought into this? Thank you. Anyone else got any comment? In that case, I will make a proposal that we uh, support this application with the proviso that it's made absolutely clear what the community hub would be for and will it be for the benefit of the town of Buckingham. Second. Second by Anthony. Mm -hmm. So can I revert and I suggest propose a reversal of that chair? In other words, that, that we will support it, but only if it is a community up for the whole community, not just for the residents. That's, I think that's what I was trying to say. We'd support it conditional upon it being conditional upon it. Yeah. yeah. Community yeah. up for the town, yeah. not just for help of court. Is that yeah. okay? I was second you because I thought that's okay. Yeah. 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 Well, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, still staying in the same area. This is 19 Bridge Street. <laughs> You'll be oh. aware that uh, it was turned down for the oh, dread and takeaway. Um, it's now a subdivision of the existing dwelling in formation of two one bedroom dwellings on the existing ground floor. Um, there are listed buildings all around it. So design and materials become really vital. Carolyn, I think you'd like to <laughs> Yes, yeah, so this is how I would like to launch in here and say, what uh, we had, do not object to the principle of a ground floor flat, but the meanness of the smaller flat, which is really no light to speak of, it's probably damp because it's built up right against a bank, is, is just appalling. This is no living space for anyone, and there's certainly no immunity provided. And I know that the heritage officer is also very critical of the fenestration, which does not match the upper floors, and to my delight, insists that a detailed landscape scheme is requested, because we all are aware that what was ripped out there was a rather attractive green corner on Bridge Street. And I, I don't know, I'm sure Kathleen or someone might have a photograph of what it looked like I suggest that perhaps a photograph of what it did look like is sent to the relevant officer and say something must be reinstated. Thank you, Grant. That's telling it like it is. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else like to comment on this? John. I concur with all of that. Um, certainly, whatever happens, I've got to tell you that from this is a complete eyesore. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't, I mean, they're, they're not ideal. Places, but I can think of people who would be over the moon to get somewhere like this to live in, you know, because it, it's not going to it's not going to be expensive to rent or buy, um, and I think there'll be people who would love to have that. So I, yeah, it's not ideal. I mean, the geography of the building is, you know, with the, the bank goes up, it's never going to be easy. But a bit like the other, the previous application, it's bringing it into some use. Let's get that place being inhabited and, and looking good. That would be my view. Thank you. Anyone you know else? Well, my view, in terms of power, then, that um, it would look a mess. Different windows, everything crammed in. I think a landscaping plan has to be provided because this is the entrance to the town, the entrance to the medieval part of the yeah. town. Yeah. Um, and at the moment, as John says, it's just an absolute ice mm -hmm. uh, No, I've got nothing else to say. Yes, it's all of that. So, what I'm going to propose, <laughs> my proposal then is that um, we oppose this development and on the grounds of the, um, the, the windows, the materials, and the lack of a landscaping plan. Mm -hmm. Would that cover everything? Second, mm -hmm. second, mm -hmm. in favor? 
At the point of information, Chair, I've just looked at the uh, Google Maps picture, you know, the street scene, mm. and it, it you can, in some cases, as in this, you can look back over history mm. yeah. from 2009, and I've got 2018, and I think we can all have a little week now as how it used to look. Thank you. Right, number three is 31 Highlands Road. Another old friend coming back. This is the <laughs> bungalow which we dealt with an application previously. They've come back now with um, creation, the conversion of loft space and creation of new first floor, erection of single story rear extension, improvements to insulation and energy efficiency. And I have, have to say, from my point of view, this is a huge improvement on the previous plan. Uh, back in society? Well, we quite like the previous plan as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, I think this is a very imaginative design. I think it uh, shows what can be done to make a house really livable for different uh, generations. And uh, we thoroughly approve of it. Yes, and Catherine's made the point well in her, her notes that um, this will accommodate sort of two and a half generations yes, of families, exactly. which is, yeah. yeah. So, I will propose them if we um, have no objections. Sorry, you're behind to me. Always in favour. And again, that's a good one. Thank you. Um, number four is 118 Morton Road. This is a household application for a single story slide and rear extensions. There one, is one objection from the immediate neighbour at 120 who complains about the potential loss of light um, from the porch canopy, but the plans don't suggest that the porch canopy is that big. I think you can, those of you looking online, you can see that on page 22, drawing the top right hand corner. It's a very, very small projection of the porch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you members feel that that would be enough to deprive the um, neighbourhood of light? Obviously. Right. No comments then. In fact, then I say no objections. It is fine. Agreed and divine to me. All those in favour? Everyone with my opinion. I'm sorry. You're rushing. Nothing's fine. In Michael Cottage in Western Avenue, which we have had in the past, we have no objection. There has been a change of um, builder, so they've had to put in different another application with different number of plans. It's basically the demolition of the existing outbuilding and construction of a single story granny annex in the garden. You can't see it from the road, it's got a large gate. I had no objection last time. Is it? Everyone happy with that? Yeah. I'll close that then. And they've got a slightly sloping route too. Slightly sloping. <laughs> so I propose no objection. Anthony seconds. All those in favour? All those except not in Pedri. Um, right, the following two applications can be considered together. This is 19, actually 18 and 19 Market Square, and they're both listed buildings. This is the ex Lloyds Bank building, and it's to allow for change of use of first and second floors to provide five residential units and changes at ground floor. Now, the design and access statement says the ground floor is intended. For retail use and an application becoming in due course for that. So this is purely for the first and second floors. Okay. Um, just to let you know that the current ecological people development in Buckingham are against it. They want to know how long the upstairs been marketed for office or retail spaces and at what price. Well, at the bank when he moved out three months ago, he <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would be concerned about bin storage. Yeah. Um, as we've already got a, an issue in the town with um, properties being turned into flats and then having numerous bins outside. So, the captain answer that. Yes, please. Waste and recycling have already been in discussion with these people. What they're going to have is a room with skip bins in it and a code pad on the door, like the old houses have, so that the bin men will use the code. Bring the skips out, empty them, and put them back. Okay. So right. they, they won't be in the picture. 
Yeah. Sure. Uh, John? Yeah, thank you. I mean, I'll support this purely on the basis that this will solve the problem in the tour. Because a lot of people, you know, want to use that. Oh, how do you get down it? No. So you know, if you're in a buggy or you've got a bush, you can't get down it. So if that solves that problem, it's worth it just for that reason, in my view. Yeah. It's not taking away the bins of the other plants, yeah. though. That was yeah. the problem. No, just for this problem. <laughs> No, I was just going to say the same thing. Um, Karen, so sad, I think this is actually rather good use of those floors, residential in the middle of town. I don't see what the ecological people have got against it. Uh, what we would see is this proposal to create the ground floor as a banking hub. Mm -hmm. And I, that may not be as anyone's power to determine that, but it would be so good to have that in the centre of town as well. Well, that may well be the intention of the Blackwell and Coughlin, the, um, the applicants, to, to, to eventually become a banking hub. They've just purely said at the moment, ground floor is intended for retail use, which I presume would, would embrace banking. Which in itself is quite encouraging, that mm -hmm. ground floor is retail. Yeah. The upper stories are residential. Now, there is one concern that you've read in Catherine's um, notes on this, the construction management plan. Mm. Where are vehicles that will be doing the work <laughs> on this dental park, <laughs> on local materials? The disabled spaces outside the old park with bank were taken up three months ago, you might remember when they did the Barclays conversion. Mm. And um, but it's a very, the, the, the entrance is actually the back through, through the sewer. Mm. So you can imagine they're going to have to take, you know, massive sheets of uh, mm. plasterboard, timbers, everything. They've got where they have to do Bath. this conversion. You can't follow the bathroom. <laughs> mm. So, um, Anthony. Uh, it occurs to me, and um, this is purely speculative, and I, I, I put it out just for what it's worth. But on the assumption that the ground floor won't be used immediately, in other words, timing-wise, works upstairs will precede, then it is possible by using late night and, and night deliveries of materials, which are then placed inside the old banking hall, which can then be used to um, undertake the work. I mean, that's entirely possible. I've seen this sort of thing done um, in central London, where that that's very difficult mm. to get uh, allowances, and I've seen that sort of thing done. Mm. Um, maybe we could suggest it, or whether it's outside our admit as a committee to start mm -hmm. uh, telling them how to work their schedules. Well, I mean, there's no reason we couldn't approve it, subject to uh, a satisfactory yeah. construction yeah. management plan. So, yeah. 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 yeah, go on. If the implication is is that the space is outside what is now Specsavers it will become the kind of location, although it's quite a long way away from the building, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But if disabled spaces are then sacrificed for the purpose of this building, if that's what the Shire Council agreed to do, then perhaps we should propose that other on-street parking should be provided instead, it should be temporarily made new batch parking. So the parking, for example, by the uh, the Buckingham Inn, um, could be turned into blue match parking for the time being while this is going on, if that's going to be the plan. Right. So I don't see why people with disabilities should have to be the ones that lose their parking yeah. spaces. Yeah. I think others should lose yeah, their they, have, they haven't suggested that. I'm just saying that's what happened. Yeah. It's better safety yeah. well, well, I don't know. They put two the the skips and just yeah. parking bays. You know, yeah. for um, weeks on end. Yeah. Um, right, I'm sure I'll make the recommendation that we approve that we have no objection to this subject to there being a satisfactory construction management plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Those in favor, second the vote. All those in favor, they run agreement. Roman abstaining. Thank you. I mean, I think probably the best thing to come out of this uh, that beautiful white part of the Royce building. Uh, the lovely Regency front, that, that's going to be safe because mm -hmm. they're not going to do anything to the outside apart from some roof skylights, which won't be seen anywhere. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a win win one. Yeah. Um, moving up the hill to Mason number eight, the former little chef. Oh, 
Buckingham Ring Road Starbucks have applied to make that into a restaurant and drive through facility. Um, there will be a loss of about um, 11 trees, but they will compensate for that by planting elsewhere on the site. They have got quite a lot of space they won't be using, which belongs to that site. Um, it's quite interesting because Starbucks in, in July were reported to be uh, selling their UK business, but that's obviously not happening now. And, uh, mm. It was quite widely reported, BBC and elsewhere. Um, so they, they, they want to come to Buckingham. I mean, we haven't got any drive, drive in coffee shops at the moment. We've got McDonald's and Costa. And, uh, yeah. But uh, and it's, I feel it's very good use for later on. Uh, it's it's bringing the area up and up and up. Karen. I don't disagree with all of that. Um, one of the things that we did feel that was not in this application and might impinge on later um, applications coming into signage, we were very aware that McDonald's, and Anthony pointed this out very succinctly, that McDonald's was a perfectly good application. And then they started messing around with all the signage, which took forever yeah. and is not particularly conducive to, to the site. And it would be worse here, particularly if it, it emerged on the on the ring road side. I did look at the loss of trees, and I, and I agree they're not too serious. And if they really will replace them, that's fine. But there is one thing I found on the site that really alarmed me in the in this design statement. They they were looking um, to have off um, site uh, compensation for biodiversity because they couldn't provide it on this site. Fair enough. So they've been in touch with something called Integrated Land Management, who have proposed that they do this offsetting on a large 600-acre site in Leckhamstead. I mean, and then tonight we've had this presentation mm. on Burton Meadows. This could be absolutely crying out for mm. offsetting. Mm. And why do they have to go to Leckhamstead? Yeah. Which is I, outside our parish. Well mm. outside our parish. I think it's disgraceful. Mm. And they really, really upset me, as you probably can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so no an integrated land management are, I am not in favor of them choosing where to offset biodiversity mm -hmm. gains. Yeah. They ruin them. Yeah, we could raise anyone wishes we could raise that as, as a concern. Yeah. Actually, definitely. I think you Karen just mentioned it, but you have concern over possible advertising. Well, it's or, just a from memory, uh, the McDonald's main um, applications went through, they got their planning, and then planning applications went in for signage. And of course, once they've got their building there, it's fait accompli, isn't it? And mm -hmm. puts a lot of pressure on any planning authority to, um, and, and it weakens the case against uh, excessive signage. And I just wondered that I couldn't see anything on this application about where or what signage they might want to do. And I, I was just concerned that uh, uh, if they're um, uh, in business, they'll want to advertise. And mm -hmm. what will they want to, to pass us by down the A421 yeah. from uh, Milton Keynes production? <laughs> and they'll want a sign there that people will be able to see at a glance. So they know to turn left and turn left again to, yeah. to get to their um, place. Um, and I could see um, pushing their luck uh, potentially. Uh, I mustn't slam you, <laughs> of course, but um, it's sort of born of uh, previous experiences. Yeah, they have in their design statement. They say quite clearly that Buckinghamshire Council has told them they cannot touch the trees Absolutely. on on the north side, which is yeah, fronting yeah. the yeah. A four through one. Nor can they touch any on the east side, which looks over the new curve. Um, but it's a very good point, you know, how do people know that Starbucks aren't going to be there? Yeah. The only sign for one they could have would be uh, together with the Shell Station sign. Sure. But, um, but I, I don't think it would, there's any problem with us saying, you know, we wouldn't object to this subject, to a signage, what the potential yeah, are. Yes, signage. yes, we'd like to see. Yeah, and, and also about the biodiversity we would we'd wish to see benefit, to the benefit of Buckingham, not yeah. another parish several miles away. <laughs> John first, then Lisa. I was simply going to say that I think there would be a sign. Yeah. I can't imagine that Starbucks are going to put themselves right next to the A421 
and not find some way to tell people driving along this that road that the Starbucks around the corner. So I think we just be prepared for that. Yeah. Well, McDonald's don't have it. What? McDonald's don't have it on the airport too. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. um, the other thing that I'm more concerned about really is the what it will do to the traffic coming in and out of the, the shell core call as well. Because given that there's people queuing at all times of day for mm. a month ago, just getting this out first, people, there we go. Um, there's going to be a lot more cars turning right and turn right onto the 413 to get down to the roundabout. I'm wondering if there should be some sort of traffic mitigation that says cars coming out of there must turn out to the and use the roundabout by Tesco to, to yeah. go that yeah. way. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be a nightmare yeah. and it's going to be an accident there because it's going to be a much greater volume of traffic. Yeah, but highways have no protection. Interesting. Well, we can still take it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there ought to be some mitigation, yeah. a bit like there is coming out of, 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 of Leadway and so on, just to discourage people yes. to, to turn right. You know, go left, it makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I went, up there, school, went up there yesterday afternoon to have a look at the site, and it took me two or three minutes to get back onto the mm -hmm. 8413. Yeah. There's just cars flying up from Tesco, yeah. with the, yeah. from, from the yeah. Tesco roundabout all the time. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, Lisa, what's next? Thank you. Um, I think we need to be very careful about the um, no trees will be lost thing because the, the one comment that McDonald's made when it was suggested to them that they go here was that they won't be seen if they went here, so they weren't interested in the site. They needed to be seen. So I, it would really concern me that that isn't their thought as well, so they will need signage um, and and possibly a loss of the greenery. Um, I can see that happening. Although they do say in the client <laughs> statement they've been told by Buckinghamshire Council that that has to remain and they don't acknowledge that. Yeah, but we've but, seen that elsewhere yeah. though, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. 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 I was just going to add that Michelle Garrard themselves might think that if there's difficulty getting out of the entrance, people would avoid using them. So yeah. bad for them is. Yeah. Yep, and remember that's a copy of one of the show guys. Yeah, uh, Andy. Thank you. Oh, I mean, in a way, I'm pleased that this little shed, which then went to Burger King, is going to be used. Uh, I have fond memories of the report. Yeah. But uh, I think they're, they're going to try and put a totem pole type sign, which Greg's have done with Esso. Uh, if you just uh, small, and I think that's what they're going to try and do. Because just put the symbol that their logo. I would just put the whole lock here you know, and people recognize the logos. And I think that's what they're going to go and do. And put a total call sign up. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't want to sound too cynical, but I'm, I'm aware of other developments not too far away from here where trees that weren't supposed to be felled have been felled yeah. um, mm. by mistake, perhaps, <laughs> um, accidentally on purpose or. But, but trees have been lost that weren't supposed to be lost. Yes. So I don't know, that, is there anything we can do to make sure that doesn't happen in this instance? Thank you. Um, if everyone's had this say, then I, I'm going to propose that we have no objection to this development subject to the protection of the trees, um, which, which they've said they'll protect. Um, subject to a, a signage plan, so we know exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and subject to a biodiversity scheme that benefits Buckingham and not a parish some miles away. Yeah, very good. good. Yes, I'll second that. You second that? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor. That's six. What's your second? Four in favor. Against? One against. One at all. One abstention. <laughs> right, um, back to Western Avenue, 130 Western Avenue, householder application for conversion of garage and construction of two bay windows and construction porch enclosure. Despite a large house, one of the group of three up on that, that corner, and some you'll have seen from Catherine's notes on this. It's sort of well wedged in between High Point and Grassmere. Um, it's, it's a standalone building, as far as 
Um, the entrance is concerned. It, there's no pavement in front of it. There's a grassy, very wide grass ward. There's plenty of parking spaces. Um, one concern Catherine raised the previous plan permission said that um, no enlargement of the dwelling should take place in any future application. Catherine is suggesting that um, boxing in the porch or the porch and adding these bay protecting bay windows would constitute an enlargement. Mm. Is that a concern of the committee? Mm. Mm. Doesn't impact anybody. No objection. No sign notice. Oh, no sign notice. Most of these haven't got a sign notice up yet, and most of them have had since before Christmas. Sorry, this one went up on the fifth, which should turn in the. It's one of those drafts that's got no date on it. Yeah. Which means it hasn't gone up yet. Okay. So. Anyway, my proposal is that we have no objection. Anthony seconded. All those in favour? That's the analysis part from Robin. Thank you. Um, then the item 10 is certified by Lake Lane. This is the high note. Uh, they just changed the description uh, to include the erection of a lot of converting, including rear dormant. No, I haven't put in previously, and a maximum of seven occupants. Um, as you know, there's been a huge number of objections to this. Anthony, you and Ronnie, I believe, attended the meeting. Yeah. Were they still residents association? I was going to say, uh, Councillor Sachbrin, I attended uh, the AGM before Christmas, and this was very much one of the key um, points they wanted to discuss, and, yeah. uh, and were much exercised by it, and, and rightly so. And in fact, all very much as laid out in the descriptions when we discussed it before. Yeah, as you know, there are there's 11 object, 12 objections now because um, the chairwoman of the later yeah. resident association has actually requested a call in to committee, which is on December 23rd. Robin, would you be prepared to call that in? I've already been out of it before then. Um, um, I. <coughs> Report on the application. But um, my last email and conversation with the officer was that we would just by the change. I still think that it's a, it's a change and precedent and that it needed to go to committee. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, you know, that's no certainty that it will. Um, but um, but it's, um, it will set precedent, and I think that the residents. Voices and the town council's voice has to be heard in this instance, and it shouldn't be done by delegated power. That's what I've said. I'll go back and um, if you check the website, it should should have my name down as a calling. There should be some paper. Thank you. Okay. If you tell me there isn't, I'll go back and ask why not. Uh, I've got two registered on the comments list because it says, I'm just stuck with the comments, and then it says, uh, council well, we don't believe to vote on this because we've already, we've already opposed it yet. This is just purely a rewording of the um, of the application. Thank you. Not for consultation, but as always, we do. Seven Grange Close off Morton Drive. Um, the placement group of attic classes, etc., has already been approved. As Catherine has noted. Um, number five, Brendan Close, erection of a single story row extension beyond the rear wall of the original house. Um, everyone happy with that? There's plenty of space there. Number seven, so Avenue, um, certificate of law on this lawful list, code roof conversion, installation. The rear dormer window, side bullet, three flights, and a change of lean to roof over the garage to a flat roof. Um, this side is still happening. They're all very quirky designs, mm. as you can see. But my personal concern, I'm sure the back into society too, is the use of flat roofs for the garage and the flat roof for a dormer. Yeah, those were uh, points we, we, we didn't make. Otherwise, it's a big property. Uh, but why can't they just put a sloping roof on? 
Mm. Mm. I mean, it's very, very yeah. weird. Does it interfere with the windows? Mm. So, does it interfere with the windows? Or? I guess that's why they want not to drop, drop the pitch through so they can get the windows in. But, uh, mm. you know, it's going to spoil the street again. There's nothing on the flat roof yeah. mm. in the whole of that, that side. I wasn't putting it forward as a positive. Right. <laughs> Anyone else have any comments on that? If not, I suppose we oppose it on the grounds of dissent. Yeah. But we don't yeah. need a flat garage roof. We don't want a flat roof. Yeah. Flat ceiling pitch. Yeah. Second by Anthony. All those in favour? That's the unanimous part for Morgan. Thank you. Um, and finally, stable cottage in Rich Street. This is one of Buckingham's. Secret places, um, the entrance is alongside Michael Graham estate agent in Bridge Street. Probably most of them have never seen it, I certainly haven't. Mm. Um, but it's a typical law for this the replacement of six windows and a door. Um, Mr. Miles from the applicants got a lot of trouble to put the catalogue in the application so we could see what it looked like. The only change would be the stable door would be replaced by. A normal door, but otherwise the windows would be slightly bigger panes. So where is this again? <laughs> where Michael like Graham is, there's, there's a doorway entrance next door to it. You go through there and it takes you into a yard. Oh. Yeah. It's got, got two or three properties. And then next door, number six, actually yes. has a place called Courtyard at number six. Mm. Yes. And then mm. Courtyard runs back on Bridge Street. Which there is cottages in it, and you can't get in there because the uh, the door to the to Bridge Street is locked. So, don't know what voters do. If no one has any comments, I propose we have no objection to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. all those in favour. Thank you. That's your last exception of Robin. Good. That finishes the applications. Let's move on to planning decisions. A couple here that um. You might like to pick up. Catherine has given reasons for the opposition. We opposed the erection of a fence of 23 Woodlands Crescent, which was a retrospective application. The planning officer didn't feel the fence was too high, didn't feel it blocked the neighbor's view when emerging into the road. And she actually added there is no right to a view property owners. It's quite an interesting spot. Mm. I mean, it's true about me, but it's a bit brutal. Um, and the other one was 48 Bolton Road, a single, that's uh, right, a Chicana in Avenue Road. Uh, we opposed the raising of the roof to form a new first floor. Um, we opposed it on the grounds of it's lots of a bungalow to housing stock. Mm -hmm. The planning officer chose not to follow that. Um, not in our parish, mm -hmm. Stolen Chase, 1855 dwellings, nice, nice. shopping centre, primary and secondary schools, drainage infrastructure, public transport system. We opposed it largely on the grounds of the traffic problems it would be creating, particularly for Buckingham commuters. Um, yeah. But that was approved um, by Buckinghamshire Council. Although it's adjacent to Milton Keynes, it does actually fall into Buckinghamshire. Mm. And Milton Keynes itself opposed it, but it was overruled by Buckinghamshire County. Mm. So, um, the other refusal, we had no objection to 55 Well Street, extensive refurbishment, alterations, and a flood barrier. Um, but the uh, no objections are subject to the historic building officer who did object to it. Um, he didn't really give reasons for it, just saying no. This, those who know the house, this is the house with the um, bricked up windows. Harking hmm. back to window tax, Carolyn, you probably know more about this. Well, I can believe that I read the officer's report this afternoon, <laughs> and I was slightly surprised at the detail it went into and the information it requested. For example, it was historical proof that the blank window wasn't to be part of the original construction, which seems to me a little bit. Uh, he went as far as to say it might be because of the window tax, which would be of interest to everybody. I really think that was getting a bit far. <laughs> but also, it, it's a very lengthy report, and it goes into quite a lot of detail about preserving conservation areas and taking great care of them. And it just makes me so cross that they're with one property, they go into all this detail and ask for lots and lots of information. And when it came to destroying Maidsmore Main Street, 
but mm. no information required at all. So I just, you know, it's just so inconsistent, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, it's been turned out at the moment, so we'll have to wait and see yeah, what, okay. what happens. I mean, what's obviously concerned over, over is the flood barriers being removed. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, Bent Hill on London Road, erection of three detached dwellings of garages. We have no objection to it, but the yeah. application has actually been withdrawn. Oh. So. oh. Um, no, it's full. We know why? reasons. <laughs> No doubt it will come back again with a slightly different application. Well, four or five dwellings, probably. Mm -hmm. So, come back as four or five dwellings. <laughs> right, number nine, then Buckinghamshire Council matters to receive news of Buckinghamshire Council new documents, other information from Buckinghamshire Council members. Boom. Robin, the floor is all. Uh, well, thank you very much. Firstly, um, so we'll read the attached letter which is on the website mm -hmm. to do with the um OG way application. Um the application was amended and uh, changed. Um, it appears that if the planning officers don't know um and uh, and I think this is the new factory by the yeah, yes, the new factory by the, the micro. Not the sorry, yeah. Um I called it in because I was concerned about the buying the theater access to it because of the I was aware that there's going to be a thousand vehicles coming out of that junction from Ozzy Way. Also aware there's likely to be three or four hundred children, mm. and also aware that. This is the delivery site. When it came through, we were very unclear, I believe, when it came here, what it was actually going to be purposed for, apart from employment. Now, they did do a lot, credit to the officers, they did do a lot of work on small uh, on the site and the building and whatever. But the I still remain concerned that the vehicles, the lorries coming up there, going into it, and the children coming out of the junction straight opposite, and the, the um, work going to mix. Needless to say, it said in the response that neither the chair nor the officer felt that that, that was some my considerations about small little ones was of any consequence. Um, but we know that because um, I think we need it to be recorded in reason it's here is set recorded. Um, so that when the issue arises, which it will, when those residents who are ever so fortunate to move into Osley Way come back to us and say, well, why are all these lorries coming up here? Going past my small children will be able to point out that it was safety um, overruled um, um, and um, and um, in a very unsatisfactory manner. I did have a serious correspondence over it, which I will not go into the detail and the quantity of what I said, but um, but I did say quite a lot. And um, but needless, so that's where we are. But if anyone's questions on that, why I say some other things, I'd be very happy to um, discuss that. So I think it is something we need to think about today. I think John's looking at it and saying, I told you so. Um, 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 because it very much figures um, some of the things that you said earlier. Lisa, was your question on this? Um, yeah, well, it's not so much a question, it's at least we know what's going to be there now. They've got new companies um, from their letter of intention, as it were, so they're going to be um, manufacturing grass taps, kitchen and bathroom and bathroom showers. So at least we know what's going to go there now, um, but they don't go into anything about, um, you know, vehicle deliveries or access, anything like that. So no. that concern is still valid. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I mean, I think it's worth noting that we, we, we learn by every experience in life, don't we? Um, and but I am, as I say, when I said early premise, my thoughts on the calling, the application discussed earlier on OSU Way. I said, I hope it will be open to Um, along with somebody that didn't decide that the vehicle situation, which is why I called it the committee, I need to, the only grounds I could look at was the vehicle parking and access in the president. Mm -hmm. Um, but furthermore to that, um, that you will get correspondence to the next meeting about the situation to do with the OSU Way development because, um, it, Catherine made us aware 
uh, well, you all were previous members I listened to, that um, with the um, that they approved it, but Angular Water had stated that they couldn't comment on the drainage because there wasn't any. Um, now I thought this was quite concerning. So I went back and um, and yeah. for me it was quite actually quite a good question. I went back and asked about it. It appears that the law is basically stating that um, although there's no grounds for the, them to and as I interpret it incorrectly, there's no grounds for them to object to something because there isn't a, a, a sewage plan for it. And there is no grounds for angular water to object to it because they haven't provided a sewage plan. But there is grounds for them then asking angular water to provide a plan thereafter. Now, this discussion went on, and, um, and to credit to the cabinet member, and credit to the leader of the council, uh, because both of them picked up on the fact that I was actually pointing out an inconsistency, mm -hmm. and they went away and suggested that after Steve Bambrick, um, the leader of the council asked him to give a legal response. And Steve Bambrick gave a legal response to explaining this stuff, the fact that even though they want to enforce it, they have no powers to insist on it when they get the vote, which basically, I think the words used were from the leader of the council, let alone my own words on it, but the words used were, well, it appears that they can um, um, build the houses then, um, but there are, you can put an easement in so they can't move in. Um, so, of course, um, so it's all very silly. Um, and needless to say that it was said at the meeting that they were going to discuss it afterwards. Right to the extent of the your ministers, the collection of those people who made uh, the receipt of PPE support um, um, in, in London or, or, or may have a second job, or, or maybe because there was a list of that published the other day, wasn't there? Um, um, those poor people in London to ask them whether they could do any change to legislation. Mm. So we have got a little bit further because it was so frustrating for us all to not understand why. So when we were blaming planning authority for not doing it properly, they haven't got the power, mm. um, which is nice to know. So that's that that will come to the next meeting, what actually were where I've given it to Catherine today. That's the next thing. Furthermore to that, um, um, today, just for information, um, parking charges will be going up in Buckingham. Oh. Um, um, I questioned that at budget through these um, and they're going to rise um, up. I mean, I will circulate the detail after the meeting. It's not, well, what way it works is that the budget is prepared. There's several days of scrutiny. The idea of the council is going on to budget scrutiny because we get a chance. We, though the committee and the scrutiny committee have to ask all the questions, you turn up and there's opportunity for you, the chairman, or let you ask additional questions. So I saw clarification today from um, the cabinet member, and he says, yes, it is going to go up. I think from memory, it's um, um, 10 p and 20 p. I think the 10 p was probably going to be on the off street parking, and the 20 p was going to be on the on street parking. Um, so I didn't verify what it was. And one of the things which came out of that conversation, because you can imagine. I didn't leave it with one question. Um, I, I said, well, what happens? You said the words along the lines of, um, out of a, the, the wording is like you know, when you get you, you, you unifying and joining together a bit. I sought some explanation around that to what the cabinet member didn't go into any detail, but he said they were going to come back at a later stage after they've reviewed these things about. Um, unifying charges and stuff in Buckinghamshire, which the answer does probably give you that they have to show some continuity because they are one council. But of course, as you can imagine, if you only drive around Buckinghamshire and go in different car parks, there's a multitude of different car park charges mm. across Buckinghamshire and a multitude of why those history of those car park and yards are. Some because they're by a railway station at a multiple of some because they're really low, nobody really uses them, and some whatever. 
So they did say they're going to consult on that. So I think that's something that the, the town council will have an interest because we've had a 20, um, I think I've had 20 odd years discussion in the car park. And I think um, other people before. Uh, yeah. Thank you, John. No, you had to, you had to, uh, no, no, right. No. Two things then. One is um, this uh, curious no. incident in the approving a, a large housing development without being connected to the main doors. It could be one of those strange incidents that actually deliver primary legislative change. It sounds like they just discovered they had that power and they're going to have to try and make sure that the uh, <laughs> glitch is held up. I also think that in the future we shouldn't call it Ozier Way, we should call it Oasis Way. Um, because that's what it actually is, isn't it? Yeah. Margaret. Yeah, thank you. I'm 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 really encouraged by the increase in the car parking charges because surely that means they'll have enough money to make sure the machines work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 I take the fifth on that. Um I don't actually have powers over that and I'm not a cabinet member. Um and um, I'm just a lonely book holder who, who digs around a bit. Um but for this meeting for the purpose of my conversations are wide and many, um, because I enjoy meeting people. What I am aware of is that um but you will be aware there was a there was this two pollution incidents in town. What I can tell you is that I believe uh, 100% sure that the first case, which is the um, case to do with sewage, well, to eat tonight, I might not do it at all, it's all good. Um, I'm advised once the bundles were presented that that case um they surrendered and that in two weeks time we should get the legal findings of the of judge in that case to deal with the sewage that went through the river in the first place so don't ask about the second case because apparently i'm not where that sure where that is but i have been following these things avidly and and whatever so that will come out in two weeks' time. We should know what the, what the fine was and what the case was. Now, um, so that's, you know, I've talked to Mark and I, I talked to Anthony about this. Um, it is of interest. We value our great river greatly. And the fact that the sewage has floated down in 2017 isn't what we want. And if the court has you know, done something good, we should then applaud them. I think at that point, we'll comment on it. Yeah, I think you could bear in mind this is a publicly broadcast. Well, it could, we should we shouldn't we will say wait. anything further on it. No, we won't. We won't say anything further until sentence has been run. until sentence or ever. Yeah. But um, is that everything? Wrong? No, just just lastly, right. um, can I ask you to join in the question of um, the bodies on Brackley Road because. I wrote to the officer again mm -hmm. um, because I'm concerned that we're now entering into a um, a long period of time. You remember that it was £78,000 was the cost of whatever. I think it would be worth the town council now um, discussing how we um, get an easement, a settlement, because it appears that it's sat with the legal people in Buckinghamshire Council and the planning people, and it's also sat with the developer and um, and the archaeology. But what concerns me about it is this is this is four years, and also I think it was twenty nineteen, was it, when they um, originally done it, mm -hmm. um, and we're now in twenty twenty three, and um, and I haven't ever seen a coroner's report. Um, um, because if, any report. <laughs> um, because if these people were the, the, the information which was available was that they were buried with their hands tied behind the back, they didn't volunteer, did they? Mm -hmm. So, um, um, I think that we, we should, as a council, start to be putting um, this in a bit more public way because I can keep going back and asking the question, it's happening. 
but there are many other pressing things I need to ask. But I think this is something that I would suggest that the town council now takes on as an issue because it's about our historic history of the town. Mm. Um, it's locked up in boxes and um we've waited long enough. And we've waited long enough. And I, I think that, you know, um I, I'd like mm. to suggest that we do that. I'll share any correspondence with you that I received back. But um I'm becoming increasingly frustrated about it. Mm. I think one, one point you just mentioned, Robin, about the inquest, I mean, it's quite unnatural. After four years, it's not yet been a coroner's inquest even open. The law is quite clear. A coroner must hold an inquest if the cause of death is still unknown and or the person might have died a violent mm. or unnatural death. That's the law. Mm. And here we are four years later mm. and it hasn't been held. So I think we should start... Demanding when well, asking. I did write over the Christmas period and many things I did write, but I did ask what their requirements interest. Because I think I spoke to you briefly on this the other day, and, and, and you made the point that we don't know that these bodies didn't die in the Second World War. Mm. We don't know that they when they died because we've got no archaeological report. And there is a danger that, that we're overlooking a crime. Yeah. Um, and um, and and I think that that's something that I would like to propose that we 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 are a bit more public about it. How we do that, I'll be guided through the town clerk. But I think that that, that I propose that I, I could do what I can do at Buckinghamshire. That, that would need to go on. I think on a, a full council meeting. Yeah. I would suggest we've got nothing on the agenda, and there's there's no information for members to make any decisions no. on that. Tonight. But it's something I could have a look at. Yeah, and then we. we Gender it um, yeah. in some way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all being mm. somebody other than myself Thank you, talking about it. So it's a different person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Peter Paul. Robin's been very modest tonight because any of you who saw the podcast from last week um, about Robin's question on the lack of sewerage information on Ozone Way will have noted that the leader of the council congratulated Robin. A very well put question, hmm. and uh, he said it should be a concern to all of us. Yeah. Well done, Robin. Mm -hmm. um, just what am I short of? Robin, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your report. Robin, I, I just like as the chairman of the planning committee, I'd like to put on record my regret that you are the only ward councillor present to this meeting tonight because. The parish charter, the wonderful parish charter, says Buckinghamshire Council will encourage Buckinghamshire Ward Councillors to attend parish and town council meetings. Mm. We have six of them, and tonight we only have one present, and there's been quite a lot of very, very mm. interesting stuff. So yeah. I would like that to be put on the record as mm. chairman of the planning committee. Yeah, mm. yeah agree. agree. Thank you. Um, right, we're, we're nearly there. I think probably Mike needs to go. Um, updates from representative outside bodies. No, perhaps it's the wrong wording after discussing the skeleton. Blocking and shirt council committee meetings, the mm -hmm. both December meetings of the North Bucks Area Planning Committee and the Strategic Sites of Council. Enforcement, any new breaches anyone wish to report upon? No. no. Um, just to double check, we had a brief conversation as, as we were walking in. The illuminated sign outside the uh, uh, the mini market on Nick on Martin Square that's been reported. Yeah, the to the last meeting, not only that, but also, also the um, kebab place next door, which has got an internally illuminated sign in the window. Oh, right. Yeah, and with a couple of others. Catherine Fourth, have you got case numbers, I believe? No, so there's okay. not in progress. Thank you, John. I'm rolling lists to receive any updates. Um, the proposed intent calling held over the next meeting, applications to fell trees held over the next meeting, land grab report, we've got that in front of you because it's two items from there. Um, one of them regarding the rear of King Charles Close, mm -hmm. one in Moorhen Way, there was one in Linden Village, if there was no breach we discovered. So they are in the hand those. Oh, sorry, what's happening about more anyway? Um, the fence, yeah, I know, I know, but what's happening? It's gone. Oh, the manor drive, 
Oh, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Open bonus has gone. Yes, yeah, so I know that's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to it's see that. It's the other one where they took over the walkway through, or after you know, walkway through. What's what's the decision? The Northern Way seems to have been um, completely deleted its side shrubbery, built a wall with a raised floor inside it. Yeah, no, I've seen, I've seen it. Everybody's keeping me posted on that because oh, I right. can't see what's going on or indeed why. That was reported to the last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was when mm -hmm. the decision to be made. Yeah. The shy so this is the road in this now. What, okay. what, what right. could be considered to be um, land grab something. Yeah, yeah. public. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you for those, Catherine. Uh, matches to report. I have a couple. Um, I reported on Fix My Street a large number of potholes on Hatred Avenue, where it goes up from Buckingham Athletic right up to the top. Um, some of them are big enough now to damage car wheels. <coughs> you pointed out to them this is not only a school bus route, it's also a school route and it's also a big residential estate. The other matter, which we've already covered in all this, um, I had telephone calls on Saturday about the number of parking machines out of order in Corn's Meadow. <laughs> I went out on Saturday afternoon, photographed that which two of them, machine error, unknown error. On them and they, that was on Saturday. They're still like that tonight. I had a look, and of course, the only two machines that are working are the farthest ones away from Waitrose. Uh -huh. And as Margaret, you said earlier, you know, something should be done. Mm -hmm. Could we report this again, Catherine? Just going to keep, keep this rolling. Mm -hmm. uh, Robin? To say, I think we all report them. Um, and I did chastise some historically more member about it, but the fact is that they're clearly something with these mechanisms and what they need didn't work because it always seems to be the one that remains working always seems to be the ones further away that are working and it seems to be the ones which are nearer working so i'm not sure how they work but they were put in by the previous council they went in at the winder for the days or whatever and if, and i just go into a car park in algebra and they've got the same um Briar's car park they've got the same system in Briar's mm -hmm. car park now I'm not sure how they work whether they work on a that's a mobile phone type situation on the top <coughs> but they do seem to be breaking down and um perhaps um we should just um because it just affect the way people operate in the town and if you can't park you just want to come back again and and, and people are willing to pay Got a miserable child, it's like then you got yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't know if you're disabled, but I know. Sorry, um, um, sorry, town clerk would just like to say something. When we and me was asking about another issue, he was told, I think it was by the police, that they suspect that it's actually the, the last lot. I don't know about this lot, that there was some criminal element in there. Um, so I will try and find out again if it's been mm -hmm. vandalism or an attempt theft of some sort that's caused them to be broken again. Oh. I don't know what it is. Um, sure. It does matter to report the, uh, I walked over the um, bridge by the skate park and the at least one, must be even two streets right there at the moment, which means it's very, very dark as you walk from the it was going to be like really close over to the skate park. Okay. Really okay. Need to be fixing, that's a main thoroughbred mm -hmm. through to the town of the Hamid's sort of Okay. Um, I think just a minor thing, but walking up Morton Road, uh, it, it three lovely trees that line it, Crotigus Lavalliae, and what two of them are beautifully pruned. And the third one, nearest uh, Summer House Hill, has got a lot of uh, suckering growth around the base. The new skin. Thank you. Anything else? Robin? It just seems to be a continued proliferation of the uh, signs that people, um, um, estate agent signs, uh, going up in appropriate places. Uh, inappropriate. I, I went by somewhere the other day and it appears that. A lot of the letting signs. Um, we won't go into who they are, but 
but we've got a policy about these signs. It, I know that um, we can't personally take them down as councillors. We do have the ability to take them down. In some places, they've got two signs next door to each other, mm -hmm. um, which is quite, um, you know, we know they've got to advertise where they are, but I, I presume that they're advertising all these things in other ways. What benefit now um, the old fashioned sign outside the property, apart from people finding it um, when they go to look at it to view to rent, is um, it's negligible, but I do think that we're getting it, it's becoming from the not so much estate agents, you don't know, see quite so many of those, but we 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 do see many of the renting ones out now without saying who they are. Um, I think we just need to have another collection of them, um, and, and then they can come back and get them, which I think we've got a policy to. You can't remove signs that we can, uh, we can write to them and ask them to remove signs, and if they are actually breaking the law like they're not within the curtilage of the property, mm -hmm. then they can mm -hmm. be charged. Yeah, it just, it just seemed like, the, I don't know where it would. You send me a list. I mean, I-, I, or, I or even just pictures on your phone. Well, well, I was in the car when I called them, so I wouldn't get the phone out. <laughs> um, that would be a real tragedy, wouldn't it? Um, uh, I was in somebody the other day who got the phone out <coughs> for a sat now, but ended up being fine for well, you. not send a letter unless you no, I just would say that people can't know. Whether it's my opinion that there's a lot of signs, I think you never think members look if it is. Just another set of eyes. Another set of eyes. Make sure it wasn't me, just me. Just that the university's changes terms at this time, so there will be a lot to mm. let yeah. the students have I'm, you know, I'm reassured that, you know, that, that people have got out of business, but, um, you know, we are where we are. Um, but, I mean, they, they are. How do I put it? They, they appear on the bypass, which we do about the same company puts in periodically on the bypass, and we do we take them down because we've got a yeah, so outside their cartilage. But on that under devolved services, I think we do that. Mm -hmm. um, we start to send the warning letter. Yeah. Thank you. Um right. This is there anything else? Chairman's items, I have nothing to announce. Mm -hmm. Date of the next meeting, Monday, the 6th of February, 7 p.m. Of course, as was we said earlier this evening, we are starting the um, neighborhood plan workshop sessions this week, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and again next week. If any of you haven't registered with Louise and you'd still like to be involved, please uh, let her know. With that, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.